Hi, and welcome back to Historic Arkansas Museum. I'm Casey Marshall, and happy Valentine's Day a few days early. Now, uh, hopefully you've got your Valentine's ready for that special person in your life, that guy, that girl, whoever, and that person that you would love to just let them know you care about, even if it's a dear friend. Today, I want to tell you the story of Thomas and Elizabeth Moore. Now, I personally have been working on my Valentine for my wife, and I cannot even match the story of Thomas More. Thomas More married Elizabeth Dyke in 1811. Now, Thomas More was a uh, poet by profession. He was known for writing these beautiful poems, and Elizabeth Dyke at the time was a very well-known actress, stage actress. She was known for her beauty and her singing voice. At some point, just a few years after they were married, Thomas More went on business in Bermuda. I'm not sure what a poet was doing in Bermuda, but while he was there, Elizabeth unfortunately contracted smallpox. This ravaged her body. It left her face horribly scarred. When Thomas returned home, Elizabeth locked herself in her bedroom. She refused to let him see her. She was terrified that if he saw her in her current state, he would no longer love her. She was known for her beauty, and, and her face was left scarred from smallpox. He wasn't allowed to see her. Being a poet, he then went down to his study, and the legend is he spent all day in his study composing a poem to Elizabeth. At that point, he went back to her that evening. He went up to her room and read this poem at her door. And when it was over, she opened the door and let him in, and they lived happily ever after is the short version of this story. But his poem was what turned her heart around and knew that she was loved no matter what. Now, the poem we should all know, we might have heard of it, it's called Believe Me If All Those Endearing Young Charms. If you've ever heard the tune or heard the name, you might have seen it on the Andy Griffith Show. You might have seen it in a Warner Brothers cartoon. The Animaniacs loved it as, a, as some of their background things. Bugs Bunny has played it on a xylophone on TV. But the poem and the tune are much, much older. So I think the 18-teens is when the poem was first written. We know the tune from a book that was published in 1890. The tune is actually much older. The tune was originally written by Matthew Locke in 1737, and its original title was My Logic is the Cold Ground. It's not very romantic. Instead, a, uh, another writer collected Moore's poems and published Sir John Stevenson in 1890, Moore's Irish Melodies, and put the two together, the song and the poem. That's the first time we see them put together for Believe Me and Follow Those Endearing Young Charms as one known thing, one known tune. Now, mass production of Valentines, at least here in the U.S., started in the 1840s. So for our mission here at Historic, Ar Historic Arkansas Museum to uh, talk about pre-Civil War and uh, post-territorial 1830s, 1840s, 50s history, this is perfect for us. Valentines and romance and a beautiful young couple sharing their love in a beautiful poem. Now, the original tune, My Life in the Cold Ground, was a fiddle tune. And I thought about bringing out my fiddle to uh, play for you guys, but instead, since I'm talking about poetry, I thought I might sing it for you. So, for your entertainment, here is Believe Me If All Those Endearing Young Chomps. Believe me if all those endearing young charms Which I gaze at so fondly today Were to fade by tomorrow and fleet my arms Like fairy wings fading away Thou wilt still be adored as this moment thou art Let thy loveliness fade as it will and around the dear ruin each will of my heart Would entwine itself fervently still It is not while beauty and youth are thine own Or thy cheek unprofaned by a tear That the fervor and faith of a soul should be known To which time would but make thee more dear Oh, the heart that has loved never truly forgets, but as truly lives on to the close. 
As the sunflower turns towards her god as she sets, the same look that she gave when he rose. Imagine that from Elizabeth's perspective. She's locked herself in a room, afraid of to let her true love see her, and he stands at her door and, and reads this poem off to her. It's a wonderful romantic story. As we lead up to Valentine's Day, uh, just imagine that, that show of emotion. Now, you might know the tune. Um, like I said, they sing it on Andy Griffith and Animaniacs. I sing it to my baby girl when I'm putting her down to sleep at night. Uh, but hopefully you didn't know the history and learned something new today. Now, if you ever want to learn something new, feel free to come by the museum. We are open Tuesday through Saturday from 9 to 5. Uh, we have demonstrations going, hopefully on a very regular basis. We're in the blacksmith shop. We have folks here on third Saturday. And tomorrow night is our second Friday art night. If you aren't aware, we are back in person. Feel free with after 5 o'clock. We will be open for Second Friday Art Night here at Historic, Ar Historic Arkansas Museum. I hope to see you then. Until then, have a good one. Happy Valentine's Day.